future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. But to be credible, those who condemn that slander must also condemn the hate we see in the images of Jesus Christ that are desecrated, or churches that are destroyed, or the Holocaust that is denied. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we continue our coverage of today's uh, terrorist attack in, in France. And that was the President of the United States at the United Nations in 2012 saying, the future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. Joining us now, Dinesh D'Souza. You know him, you love him. Hello, Dinesh. How are you, sir? Happy New Year. Uh, Steve, Happy New Year to you, and it's good to be on the show. Well, thank you for coming on, as always. Uh, terrible occurrence today. I want to get your reaction uh, to what happened today in, uh, in France at that magazine. Yeah, so I think, Steve, nowhere in the world today is there a uh, religion that takes the point of view that if you criticize it, if you mock it, if you make cartoons about it, that it's going to unleash its fanatics to show up en masse with machine guns and start shooting people. Uh, there is some deplorable history of religions doing this through the centuries, but today Islam is in a category of its own in uh, generating this toxic fanaticism that basically says that if you criticize the religion, if you criticize the prophet, uh, if you make fun of us, we think it's open season on your life. So this is not a matter of Obama's idiotic nuances and bogus equations. Uh, we're dealing here not with religion in general, but with a specific religion and a specific form of toxic fanaticism that is, uh, that is our unique political challenge now. I, I, I want to play you something also, Dinesh, that, uh, you know, after Sony, the president said, oh, they should have talked to me. They can't, you can't capitulate to this kind of blackmail. And when, of course, he and Hillary made the video uh, apologizing for that supposed anti-Muslim video that they say caused Benghazi. And now they're out there today, all of them, Kerry, Obama, oh, freedom of the press, you can't sacrifice. Well, I take you back to uh, uh, 2012, I think it's October, uh, September 19th. Jay Carney, speaking for the president, about this very magazine. Listen, 40, uh, this is 50. Well, we are aware that a French magazine published cartoons feature, featuring a figure resembling the Prophet Muhammad, and obviously we have questions about the judgment of publishing something like this. Uh, we know that these image will be, images will be deeply offensive to many and have the potential to be inflammatory. Uh, but we've spoken repeatedly about the importance of upholding the freedom of expression that is enshrined in our Constitution. In other words, uh, we don't question the right uh, of something like this to be published. Uh, we just question the judgment behind the decision to publish it. And, and I think that that's our view about uh, the video that uh, uh, was produced in this country and, and has caused uh, uh, so much offense in the Muslim world. So they don't have a, they're not questioning the right of people to, to put these kind of cartoons and publish them or make the movies that they say cause Benghazi. But it's the judgment of, in this case, the magazine that wound up being shot up today that they question. So how could they have it both ways? They don't think they're having it both ways. They think they're restating the old argument that I disagree with you, but I defend your right to say it. But, but here's the point. Uh, you know, either words are like bullets or they're not. Uh, if they're like bullets, then the Muslims are right, that by insulting them, you're in effect verbally shooting them. And they have the right to come back and then actually shoot you. So if you want to defend free speech, by the way, this is not just a constitutional right in the American Constitution. It's a right affirmed in all liberal societies. And it's a particular irony of our time that it is we conservatives who have now become the defenders of the liberal tradition, while the so-called liberals coddle this Islamic radicalism. They're willing to suppress free speech on the campus. So they are licensing the curtailment of speech and in a sense acceding to the, the, the Islamic radicals who say, listen, you want to outlaw speech on campus. We want to outlaw it by shooting people who do it. Right. Absolutely. All right, Dinesh, always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. My pleasure. Dinesh D'Souza, ladies and gentlemen. 
here on the Steve Malzberg Show. All right, we're going to come back. Uh, we are expecting the president who weighed in on this earlier today at the White House, but he's going to be making remarks, uh, I believe, in Detroit or somewhere in Michigan, and uh, we believe he will address uh, this. So we'll try to bring you those latest remarks as they're happening uh, when he takes to the podium, whether it's in this hour or next hour. So keep it where it is. We're coming back.